So remember my last tip about the number nine, how to get the right taper for the interproximals, like doing vertical lines, parallel to the long axis. I used to, to, to tell people, be obsessed with the long axis of the tube. So here it's going to be even more important for the bridge, because especially here, if you see the acadental type of don't, number five is not parallel, it's kind of tilted measly is not parallel to number three and bridge they need to be extremely parallel to each other so if you follow the anatomy of the tooth and do your preparation follow this anatomy the preps are going to be divergent right so those lines are going to be way more important now because you're dealing with two teeth that need to be parallel to each other so and another thing is like Sometimes people are not able to do those parallel lines in the right way. And if you do the line in the wrong way, that's going to give you a wrong direction, right? So it is important that you really get this line very straight down, very parallel to the long axis of the tooth. So I'm going to give you a hint on how to get those lines uh, straight down parallel to the long axis of the tooth, especially for number five. Okay, you see like number five is like this, and if I do a vertical line parallel to number three, it would be something like that. So you can see if I compare this, this model that I didn't do any preparation, that you see that the number five is tilted, but at the end, when I finish my preparation, you're gonna see that they are parallel. Mesio is parallel to mesio, and distal is parallel to distal, and they have the same path of insertion, right? So you can see some of the line that I did previously here. So what I would do is like this. So to draw the lines, you can do something like that. You can get a probe or like or a straight instrument that helps you to draw the lines like this. If you, if you do like by freehand, sometimes you make it wrong. So you could go like this, especially here close to the interproximal area where you're gonna need to break the contact and you put your instrument, try to imagine a long axis going this way and you go here and you put your instrument and then you go with your pencil, you touch your instrument, try not to move it and then you do a vertical line. If you see that, oh, that line, it, I, I think I moved and it's not right, you delete it and then you try again. So take your time to do this, right? So go again, long axis of the tooth and pencil. If you want to do more lines, just to make sure, make this line as long as you can, because if you make short lines, you lose reference. Remember that your burr will need to follow that direction to prevent undercut or to prevent over taper, right? So you can make more lines, especially when you're working on mesial, for example, and they are parallel to each other. So for the, for the premolar, there is a bump here in this type of dome that you can follow that as the long axis. So you can go here and you make a first line right in the middle, straight down. And then you need to break the contact here, right? So you make another one. So your burr is going to be completely parallel to that. And then you make another one on this top. You see, that's it. With that guidance, and if you always follow that direction when you're breaking the contact, this bar is too, too big, it's not the case, but it's easy to show you. If you always point to that line and you follow that, and you never tilt your burr, you would have the taper the right way, and the taper of mesial five, would be parallel to mesial of three and distal of three with distal of five.